that you will never leave me and never will part so through every trial no i won't back down my lord and savior yes you wear the crown when you rose over death you claim the victory so i rise every day for you have set me free
Faithful Jesus Church World Harvest. Ako po si Ian. Kumusta po kayong lahat? We just had a 26th year anniversary last Sunday. Nakasama po ba namin kayo? If you missed that service last Sunday, eh, pwede po yung pumbalikan ang ating pong, uh, mga services last Sunday. Uh, check niyo po yung ating YouTube sites at ang ating pong Facebook page. 
Marami pong salamat for joining us again for uh, today. Uh, panibagong buwan at panibagong series. Today is November 1st and we are truly grateful on behalf of Faithful Jesus Church Ministry. Marami pong salamat for joining us and especially for this another year as we journey along with the Lord sa panibagong yugto ng ating pong church. Bago po tayo magsimula, eh, gusto ko po ng tanongin na ishare nyo na po ba ang video na ito sa inyong mga kaibigan, mga kapamilya, office mate, or to anyone that you know that uh, who needs to hear the message of the Lord today. Now is the time to do it. Pwede nyo rin po silang itag sa ating comment section. Now, samahan nyo po ako in reading Psalm 33 verses 20 to 22. Again, that is Psalm 20, 33, verses 20 to 22. I'll be reading in English Standard Version. Basahin po natin. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in Him, because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. I would like to read it again in verse 22. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. As we continue to hope in the steadfast love of the Lord, naniniwala po tayo that greater things are ahead of us. Kaya as we start po uh, this new chapter, this new year, of the ministry of Faithful Jesus Church, especially po sa setting po natin sa online service, ay patuloy po tayong umasa dahil alam po natin that the steadfast love of the Lord will never fail us. Let us all pray. Marami pong salamat aming Panginoon na Diyos at Akila. You are truly amazing and wonderful, O God in the lives of Faithful Jesus Church. And as you lead us in this new year, na magsasama-sama po kami, salamat po. Dahil alam namin that whoever you are from last year, alam namin that you are the same God na nakikilos Panginoon sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin. So as we start, our service today, we just want to magnify you and to worship you and to give you praise, O God. Marami pong salamat dahil patuloy niyo pong binubuhay ang pag-asa sa bawat isa sa amin. Kaya pagpalain niyo po ang lahat ng mangyayari today, from this time and forth, O God, especially as we listen to your word, O Lord, maraming marami pong salamat because we know that exciting things are will gonna happen from now and forward. Maraming marami pong salamat. Give us the joy. Give us your peace, O God. And give us excitement to worship you and to give you praise. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Let us now worship and praise the Lord. Blessed morning po, faithful Jesus. Ito pong araw na ito ay para sa ating upang magpasalamat, bigyan ng parangal ang ating Panginoong Isus. Sama-sama po tayo. Salamat Panginoon sa nagdaang taon. Salamat at mas maganda pang mga bagay ang parating sa amin. Purihin ka Panginoon. Hallelujah.
sa iyo, Panginoon. Walang pagkatakot. Walang pagkatakot. Walang pangangamba. Ngayon, iyo ang kasama. Walang pagkatakot. Walang pangangamba. at kabutihang hindi nagbabago at sa pangako mo na noon, ngayon at magpakailanman kasama po namin kayo tanggapin nyo mula sa amin pong puso ang aming pagsamba
part of our worship, now this is the time to give. Bago po tayo magbigay, eh, samahan niyo po ako at buksan po natin natin mga Bible in uh, Deuteronomy uh, 15 uh, verse 10. Again, in Deuteronomy 15 verse 10. You shall give to him freely 
and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him. Because for this is the Lord your God who bless you in all your work and all that you undertake. Sa context po na binasa natin, tinuturo po dito yung pagbibigay sa poor, sa ini. In this challenging times, napakarami pong nangangailangan. Ikaw, ako, bawat isa po sa atin ay mga nangangailangan. Our church has been committed in giving to the poor and to those in need. Pero ito pong pagbibigay na ito won't be possible if not because of your generous giving. Kaya patuloy po namin ini-encourage ang bawat isa na magbigay because we know that every time we give, yes, we are worshiping the Lord with all our tithes and offerings, but we also know that every giving, every tithes and offering that we offer ay magagamit po sa pag-reach out po to those who are in need, to those who are poor. At sabi dun sa promise, sa Deuteronomy 15 na binasa natin, The Lord will bless whatever you undertake. Kaya here are the ways to give. So now, alam na natin ang mga paraan para magbigay. Kung handa ka na, eh, patuloy po natin buksan ng ating puso, magkaroon ng tamang intention kung bakit tayo magbibigay. I-ready nyo na po ang inyong mga envelopes kung kayo po ay nasa tangible giving pa rin. Or baka po uh, through online na, lalo na sa setting natin ngayon, uh, online na. So, ihanda nyo na po yan. Isama nyo na rin po ang inyong mga prayer requests. Meron po tayong dedicated page para po sa ating mga prayer requests, yung faithful prayers. Kung hindi naman po, you can course it sa ating pong, uh, uh, Facebook page. Kaya kung handa ka magbigay, tara po, sama-sama po tayong manalangin. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to give. Marami pong salamat for increasing the generosity in each one of us. Thank you for increasing our love for you. Because we, we will not understand the value of giving if we don't have much love for you, O God. At alam po namin, Panginoon, that every time we give, we worship you, Lord. Kaya una po ninyong saliksikin ang aming mga puso. Are we truly worshiping you with our tithes and offerings, O God? At alam din namin, Panginoon, tulad nga ng aming binasa, that every tithes and offerings that we offer for the church will be used para po sa pagtulong sa mga nangangailangan. And thank you for using Faithful Jesus Church, the ministry of Faithful Jesus Church, as one of your instruments, O God, to help those who are in need. Maraming maraming pong salamat. Along with this giving, is a step of faith. Kasama nito ang aming mga panalangin na naniniwala po kami that you, O God, will honor and bless every desires of our heart. Maraming maraming pong salamat, Panginoon. Again, may generosity continually abounds in this church, Lord. Patuloy po ninyong pagyamanin ng generosity, ang pagmamahal sa inyo at ang pagmamahal sa mga taong nangangailangan sa aming pong iglesia. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And amen. We can now give. At habang tu- po tayo po ay nagbibigay, ay makinig po tayo sa ating mga exciting announcements happening this week. Sobrang dami nating dapat ipagpasalamat. Kaya marami rin tayong reasons to give more and love more this November. I am Marvin from Faithful Jesus Church World Harvest. Today, I want to invite you to join us at Faithful Everywhere every day. Every Monday, we have FLI e-classes via Zoom. Kung interested kang sumali sa classes ng Jumpstart, Startright, Sure Foundation, at Believe in Live, just message our Facebook page to enroll. Tuwing Tuesday, set your own schedule for your family altar. Then on Wednesday, let's join the midweek service with Faithful San Pedro at 5 p.m. via Facebook. Huwag natin kalimutan ang prayer meetup every Thursday at 7pm via Zoom. And of course, our faithful talks every Friday also at 7pm via Facebook. 
every Saturday, let's tune in to Faithful Perspectives at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. And of course, let's join our online worship services every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Pagkatapos naman ng service, kung kailangan man ng prayers, bukas ang ating prayer rooms via Zoom. You can see the link and code on screen. Kaya wag tayong aalis agad after the service, join our prayer room. Let's also encourage the kids to join KOD Online 5 minutes after the service. Pwede rin mapanood ang KOD Online every Sunday at 1pm on Kids of Destiny's Facebook page. Ngayong araw, the Lord wants us to focus on His Word with our hearts and mind. Kaya tawagin na natin ang buong pamilya, ihanda na ang Bible, at maging excited to meet the Lord today. Sabay-sabay tayo, let's declare Faithful's 2020 Vision. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, whose love and destiny I will live in. I am a lover, I am a worshiper, I am a giver, supporter, and peacemaker. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my campus, we will seek the Lord. As for me and my workplace, we excel for the Lord. Thus, I will connect with God daily. I will work with my faith group weekly. I will use my talents to serve the ministry. As Jesus makes my heart pure, He makes my future secure. This year, I will trust and obey, for His blessings are sure to stay. Support and pray for the mission of national transformation. Faithful's 2020 vision is mighty multiplication. It was year 2009 when I had my major heart operation. I remember that it was right after our church anniversary celebration. It was a day wherein I was preaching to a lot of people inside a very big cinema. We experienced a very glorious worship. Pagkatapos, we prayed over a lot of people. People were crying, they were delivered, they were saved, and they were miraculously healed. No mga panahong yun, umaasa ako na Lord, baka naman yung matagal ko nang pinapanalangin na milagro ng kagalingan ay matanggap ko na. Pero hindi po eh. I still need, I still needed to go to Philippine Heart Center at harapin ang aking operasyon. Habang ako ay uh, dadali na sa operating room, naglalaro ang maraming tanong sa aking kaisipan. Pero ganun pa man, I still trusted in the Lord and held on to His Word. Habang nag-isip ko eh, um, hindi kaya ako love na love ni Lord? Kulang ba ako sa faith? Hindi kaya ako malakas kay Lord? Makasalanan kaya ako? Ganun po talaga eh, kapag ka nasa pain point ka pa, you will never be able to understand why. Pero habang ikaw ay sumusunod, looking back after so many years, now I understand that I needed to be broken for Him to bless me and be made bold. He did not want me to be healed ng instantly. Pero ang gusto niya, maranasan ko yung blessing na maraming maraming tao ang kanyang ginamit para ipunin ang pambayad sa loob ng isang taon at yung pag-ibig at sama-samang pananalangin ng buong church at ng aking pamilya para mabuo ang kagalingan ko. Kaya naman, after that, and even until now, by God's grace, I am bold to declare to every one of you that God is indeed faithful. Let's talk about broken, blessed, and bold. And this is the catch of our message. Our heart grows weak if it is not strengthened by truth. Our mind becomes prideful if it is not softened by grace. Salamat sa Diyos kasi yung salita niya at that time na sobrang hinang-hina na yung isip ko kakaisip, 
pinalakas niya ako. At salamat, tinuruan niya rin akong maging malambot sa kanya kasi kung naisip ko na, you know, I have been healed miraculously by God, baka lumaki po ang aking ulo. Sabi po sa Revelation chapter 5, verse 5a, mismong ang Panginoong Yesus ay tinawag ng ganito. He was called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion is a picture of boldness. But just the same in verse 6. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. And this time, this is a picture of a broken lamb. A weak lamb. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word that refers to Jesus became a human being and lived here among us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the one and only son of the father. From him all the take note of the words kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. Makikita po natin sa mga talatang ito na mismo ang ating Panginoong Yesus, He was kind. At the same time, He held on the truth. Jesus Himself was broken and at the same time, was bold. Alam po ninyo, sa lahat sa atin na umaabot sa maraming tao, nagbabahagi ng ating pag-asa at gusto rin natin na makakilala sila sa ating Panginoong Yesus. Tandaan po natin ito. The world doesn't need bullies who stand firmly for the truth but ignore their own brokenness. Yung nakakita na po ba tayo nun na mga, mga believers ng Panginoon na medyo may air, may hangin, na lahat na lang eh, sila ang magaling at ang ibang tao ay hindi magaling. Yung ikaw na, ikaw na lang ang totoong anak ng Diyos. And also, we have to consider that the world doesn't need bystanders who are broken over sin but won't act boldly for the truth. Sa kabilang banda naman po, may mga krisyanong uh, masyadong uh, kawawa ako, Panginoon, mahinang mahina ako, Panginoon, ako'y makasalanan. Totoo naman po yun. Pero hanggang doon na lang ba? Uh, Sobrang hina na ba lang talaga natin and we will not be able to act boldly on the truth of the promises of God. So makikita po natin sa mga talatang ito na importante na may balance between brokenness and that of boldness. Let's consider the process of being used by God. Three things. Brokenness, blessedness, and boldness. Pakiulit nga po, brokenness, blessedness, and boldness. Nung isang araw po, or halos naman pa ulit-ulit na mga araw pag may pagkakataon, naglilinis po kami ng bahay. At yung mga gamit na hindi na po maayos ay tinatapon na po namin kasi gagamitin mo pa ba yun? Eh, sira na. Kung ako po, ganun, sa ating pong Panginoon, hindi pala. Na yung mga broken, yun pa nga, ang favorite niyang gamitin. Ayoko po ng word na broken, but just the same, I needed to preach the word of God about this topic. When we encounter God, point number one, then we will be broken. Wala po talaga. Kapag naranasan mo yung kaluwalhatian ng Diyos, yung totoong Diyos, ha, hindi yung hanggang isip lang na akalam natin. When we really encounter God as in so intimate with God, we cannot help but be broken. Let's talk about the life of Isaiah. Yes, the great prophet, 
Isaiah, mightily used by God, very bold in preaching about his love and the hope that he has. Pero at one time, he became broken before the Lord. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Ito po ay pangyayari pagkatapos po yung nagmayabang na Haring Uzziah died. At that time na namatay ang hari, magulo po eh. Siyempre, siya ang leader ng buong bansa. But at the time of confusion, at the time when everything was out of control, pinaalala ng Diyos that He is still sitting on the throne. Above Him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, He covered His face. And with two, He covered His feet. And with the two, He flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, one time, Holy, second time, Holy, third time, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Grabe po. That is what we mean by encounter with God. It was not just in the mind. It was really an experience. Meron kang naramdaman, meron kang nakita, meron kang narinig, meron kang nasaksihan. At yun ang nangyari kay Prophet Isaiah. He had an encounter with God. Pero alam niyo po yung totoong encounter, hindi ka magiging mayabang na ah, 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 ako na meet ko si Lord, ah, 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 ako akong kinakausap ng Diyos. Ang totoong encounter will lead to brokenness. Look at what happened in verse 5. And I said, Woe is me, kawawa naman ako, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Ang nangyari po sa propetang ito, dahil nakita niya ang kabutihan at ang kalwalatian ng Diyos, You know, the holy, holy, holy means super, duper, duper, duper. That's the superlative degree of the word holy. Ang ibig sabihin, he saw the perfect God. And in the light of that, he realized his imperfections. Totoo po, sa mga kapatiran, sa mga kristyano, na totoong nakaranas ng presence, ng intimacy ng Diyos, ang laging epekto nito sa liwanag ng kanyang kabutihan, makikita mo ang iyong kasamaan. Sa liwanag ng kanyang perfection, makikita mo ang sarili mong imperfection. When we compare ourselves with others, we become proud. ba diba? Pag nakita natin sa Facebook, ay mas magaling ako dyan ay mas maggrabe ang asawa ko diyan mas magaling ang anak ko diyan nakaka nakaka lead lang po sa kasalanan talaga yon at nakakayabang factor po yung kinokumpara mo ang iyong sarili sa iba but when we compare ourselves with God we become broken yung makita mo maranasan mo ang ang mabuting Diyos, ang epekto nun, makikita mo ang iyong kakulangan. And that's what happened to Isaiah. Immediately he said, ang dumi ng bibig ko. Hindi niya sinabing, oh my no, ito ang kasalanan ko, ito ang kasalanan ko. Ang naisip niya yung maliit na detalye na madumi ang kanyang bibig, e saan ba nang gagaling ang lahat ng kasalanan kung hindi sa ating mga sinasabi, sinasabi, at sinasabi. When we encounter God, we become broken. Nananasan mo ba yun? Yung, ay, every time that you worship, you realize that without God, you are nothing. When I worship at that time dun sa heart center, ang yabang ko pala. 
Diyos nga pala siya at nakaupo pa rin siya sa trono niya na kahit ano ang mangyari, kahit nakadalawang stroke na ako at wala akong pangbayad sa ospital at hindi namin alam mag-asawa kung ano ang aming gagawin, dapat makita ko pa rin that apart from God, I am nothing. What do we mean by brokenness? I'm going to use the acronym BROKEN. Para po sa akin, pag sinabing broken, dahil na-encounter mo ang Diyos, you have bended heart. Hindi mapagmataas ang iyong puso. Letter R, you are repentant. Yun agad ang sinabi na Isaiah, eh. Lord, sorry po. Panginoon, napakabuti mo, pero ako ang dami kong kakulangan sa'yo. Patawarin mo po ako. Letter O, obedient to God's will. Naalala mo nung nag-worship tayo, Di ba, yung sa tindi ng presence, talagang isin, isinusuko mo na lahat na Panginoon. Yung boyfriend ko po, titigilan na namin kung anong ginagawa namin. Lord, hindi na po, isusuko ko na po lahat ng mga bisyo ko. That is the effect of intimacy in worship. You have a tendency to obey, not your will, but God's will. Letter K is, you know your limitations. Yung... Yung wala eh. Hindi nga pala ako Diyos eh. Ang dami kong sablay, ang dami kong kulang. Letter E, embraces his mission. Yung, it's no longer me. Hindi lang ako ang tao sa earth. Marami palang tao na ang buhay ay hindi lang tungkol sa akin. Ito pala ay tungkol sa mas maraming mga tao na minamahal din ng Diyos at hindi lang tungkol sa akin. And letter N, not self-ruled. Hindi ako ang nasusunod. Ikaw, Panginoon, ang susundin ko. Naalala ko po nung isang araw that I experienced pain. I think there was really a severe headache. Pero dahil hindi ko nakaya yung pain at ang dami ko pang dapat gawin, Ininom ko po yung methanamic acid. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa. Kung hindi nakasunod-sunod po yun eh. Every time sasakit, iinom. Every time sasakit, iinom. Nagulat na lang ako nung isang araw. Nag-red po yung uh, legs ko. Tapos yung dila ko po, nag, nag-red din yung loob. And then after that, nawala naman po, pero sobrang sakit. Sa sobrang sakit at my age, tinawagan ko po yung sister ko, tinawagan ko po yung best friend ko, tinawagan ko po yung nanay ko, pati tatay ko. Wala lang, umiiyak lang ako. Sa sobrang sakit. Pati sa asawa ko, miyak din ako dahil hindi ko nakaya yung sobrang sakit. But right then and there, dahil nahirapan ako maglakad, I was so dependent upon everyone. Even going up and down the stairs, I have to be led by my son. At naisip ko, yun ang brokenness. Yung wala kang maipagmamalaki, hindi mo kaya sa sarili mo. Kakailanganin mo talaga ang Diyos dahil kung ikaw lang, ang yabang natin, walay naman tayo. When we are broken, point number two, then we will be blessed. It doesn't stop in brokenness. Hindi naman masukista ang Panginoon para, oops, babaliin kita. Ang sabi sa Isaiah chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, nung sinabi ni Isaiah na, Lord, ang dumi ko, Panginoon, ang dami kong kasalanan, Panginoon, marumi ang aking buhay, Panginoong Diyos, patawarin mo ako. Alam mo, ang sagot ng Diyos in verse 6, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. So there was an initiative from the Lord. And he touched my mouth, And said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt 
is taken away and your sin atoned for. Hindi ko alam kung naranasan mo na yon o mararanasan mo pa lang ngayon. Yung kapag walang wala ka at inamin mo talaga yan kay Lord Jesus, meron siyang gagawin para kumpletuhin ka at palakasin ka. Na dun sa point na inamin ko sa Diyos that I have a lot of relationships na hindi maganda. That I've been doing a lot of things na sablay sa salita niya. Right then and there, I remembered it clearly. Every Sunday yon Panginoon, hindi ko kaya mag-preach kasi sablay ako. Pero mararamdaman mo yung pagpapatawad ng Diyos. Mararamdaman mo yung G-R-A-C-E, yung grace ng Diyos. It really humbles you. But then again, you're blessed. Yun pong humihingi ng kapatawaran, binibless ng kapatawaran. Yun pong humihingi ng kalakasan dahil hindi na niya kaya, binibless ng kalakasan. Yung humihingi ng karunungan dahil hindi siya marunong, binibless ng karunungan. Is there any beauty in, in brokenness? What is the blessing of brokenness anyway? I think it's the nearness of God. Psalm 34 verse 18, The Lord is near to those who are discouraged, to those who are humbled. He saves those who have lost all hope. Yung pag walang-wala ka na, dun mo mararanasan na hindi malayo ang Diyos, lalapitan ka niya. Another that I can think of as blessing of uh, brokenness is that of revival. Yung bubuhayin ka niya ulit. Yung wala ka na, pero binuhay ka niya ulit. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15, The high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one, says this, I live in the high and holy place. That's the heavens, di ba? Doon naman talaga nakarat, nakatira ang ating Diyos. At hindi lang doon, And with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. Grabe! Lord, nakadira ka sa napakaluwalhating kalangitan. Pero nananahan ka rin sa puso ng mapagpakumbaba at walang-wala sa inyong harapan. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. That's revival. Alam niyo po ako, lagi po ito. Every Sunday, right after I preached, every Sunday, day in and day out, year in and year out, I felt I'm a failure. Right. Sasabihin ko, Panginoon, parang palpak, parang walang dating, parang hindi ko na i- bahagi ng mabuti yung message mo and I felt so down I felt so tired and I failed pero kapag lumapit ka sa Diyos i-revive ka niya palalakasin niya ang loob mo at may mga gagamitin siyang tao na hindi ganon na dun sa mga panahon na kala mo walang wala meron meron another thing is that When you're broken, you're also really blessed. Matthew 5, verses 3 and 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the broken, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, yung nawawalan tayo, umiiyak tayo, na broken heart tayo, na disappoint tayo, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When was the last time that you really cried a lot before the Lord because you lost something? Maybe you lost your job, maybe you lost your boyfriend, your girlfriend, a loved one. Pero di ba nung umiyak ka at nagpakumbaba ka sa Diyos, naramdaman mo naman agad na nandun siya. Nandun ang comfort niya at yung assurance na 
hindi ka nag-iisa. And one thing that Isaiah also received as a blessing is that of forgiveness. Nilinis ng Diyos ang kanyang buhay sa ating lahat na lumapit sa Panginoon kahit gaano karami ang ating kasalanan, pinatawad tayo ng Diyos. Luke chapter 18 verses 13 and 14. May isang tax collector nagyabang na nagyabang sa harap ng altar at sinabing buti na lang hindi nila ako katulad, buti na lang hindi ako katulad nila. Pero meron din pong lumapit sa Panginoong Yesus na tax collector at nagpakumbaba. He was broken before the Lord at ang sabi niya, Panginoon, grabe po, makasalanan po ako. Hindi ako karapat dapat patawarin. Pero ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, those who humble themselves, yun, they will be made great by the Lord. And they were made right before the Lord before they went home. Nakita po natin na ang Diyos talaga tapat sa kanyang pangako. Ang nagpapakumbaba, kanyang itinataas. At ang nagpapakataas-taas, naknak-naknak po sa ating lahat, ay ibababa po ng Diyos. Wala pong dapat na sa itaas. Hindi tayo, hindi ako, hindi ikaw, kung hindi ang Panginoong Yesus lamang 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, yun naman ang pangako niya kapag tayo ay nagpakumbaba when we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Kaya po, tandaan natin, when we have an encounter with God, ano nga po? Then we become broken. But it doesn't stop there. When we are broken, then we become blessed. And when we are blessed, hindi doon titigil, then we will be bold. Ang sarap pong isipin na kaya po ako nagsaserve sa Panginoon. And I'm very open to admit that I'm a broken woman. It's because I have experienced the grace of God. I have experienced being washed by the blood of Jesus sa lahat ng sablay ko sa nakaraan kong buhay. And because of that, I stand here not because I'm great, but because of the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Wow, nag-uusap si Lord, si Lord at si Lord, si Father God, ang Holy Spirit, at ang ating Panginoong Yesus. Sino ang ating ipapadala? Sino ang magbabahagi ng kabutihan ng Diyos? Pero sumagot si Isaiah na hindi naman siya ang tinatanong. Here am I. Send me. Alam niyo po, may kakaiba talaga when you're intimate with Jesus, naririnig mo siya. Nararamdaman mo siya, nakikita mo siya sa lahat. Kahit na pangit yung sitwasyon, naririnig mo yung boses niya na umaalalay sa iyo. Kahit hindi maganda ang 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 kinakaharap natin, nakikita mo pa rin yung pag-ibig niya at ang pagsama niya sa iyo. At yun ang nangyari kay Isaiah. Narinig niya ang boses ng Diyos. At dahil naranasan niya, he cannot contain the experience to himself. I have experienced the goodness of the Lord. I have experienced the healing of God, the provision of God. And I cannot help it but share it to you with confidence, with boldness. Dahil alam ko, kung ginawa sa akin ng Diyos yun, gagawin niya rin sa ating lahat. At kung ginawa ng Diyos yun sa ibang nagpapatutuo ng 31 days of hope, gagawin rin natin na, ng Diyos yun sa atin at maaring higit pa. Ano nga po ba ang beauty ng boldness na galing sa Diyos? It's the help from God. Hebrews 4.16, yun ang sabi niya, let us come boldly into the throne of the gracious God. Then we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us 
when we need it the most. Opo, nagpapakumbaba. Opo, inaamin natin sa Diyos na makasalanan tayo. But it doesn't stop there. Dati pa po yun eh. Sana po lahat maintindihan natin that whenever we come before the Lord, His grace will also be there. Huwag tayong maging mayabang, kayang-kaya ng Diyos patawarin ang lahat ng ating kasalanan. And because of that, may boldness tayo na kapag humingi tayo sa Diyos, hindi may patago tayo, hindi dahil mabait tayo, hindi dahil nagsaserve tayo. It's just because of His grace. Kaya sa totoo po, yung mga nagmamayabang na mga believers ng Panginoon, I don't think they're broken. At yung namimintas ng namimintas at lahat na lang nakikita mo mali sa ibang tao, ikaw na ang pinakamabait na nila lang at sila ay salbahe. I don't think they understood what it means to be given the grace of God. Na ang, na ang dulot lang talaga ng lahat ng brokenness na stories natin ay ma-realize natin na apart from the Lord, wala tayo. At kung wala tayo pero tinulungan ng Diyos, sino tayo para iput down ang ibang mga tao? Another beauty of this boldness from the Lord is that of the victory. Na alam mo na pagbakla, pagpaplakda mo ay pag-ahon mo. Sabi niya sa Romans 8 verses 35 to 37, di ba? Meron bang makapaghihiwalay sa atin sa pag-ibig ng Diyos? Na kahit anong mangyari? No. Ang sabi niya sa verse 36, uh, In everything, in 37, In everything, we have won more than a victory because of Christ who loves us. Ang sarap lang na yung victory na pinagmamayabang natin, pinagmamayabang natin yun with humility that it's not because of me, but it's all because of the grace of God. When I had my honors during our graduation, when I was able to finish my graduate studies, nahirap, nahirap ako para matapos yun. May boldness na sabihin, praise God, ang galing talaga, Lord. Pero may karugtong eh. Lord, kung hindi dahil sa'yo, hindi ko yun maaabot. Another one that I remembered is the fullness of the Spirit. Oo po, whenever we are weak, then we are strong. Paano nangyayari yun? Every time I preach, I cannot do it on my own strength. Kilala ko yung sarili ko, introvert ako, hindi ko kaya magsalita sa inyong naharapan at hindi ko kaya sabihin ang lahat ng ito. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit, just like in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, and when they had prayed, especially pag prayer meetups po natin, sama po tayo, every time that we had devotion as volunteers, the place in which they were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, because they were waiting upon God. Nagsama-sama yung mga pinatawad ng Diyos. Nagsama-sama yung mga kasalanan na walang-wala pero humingi ng tulong sa Panginoon. And they continue to speak the Word of God with freedom and boldness and courage. Kaya ko po na ikukwento ang pangit kong past is because I have been set free. Hindi ko kaya may ikukwento yung kasalanan ko kung nandun pa ako. Pero kaya ko nasasabi kasi pinalaya na ako ng Panginoon. Ang sabi ng anak ko parang, nako naman, mami, ang daming bawal, ang daming bawal, ang daming bawal. Parang feeling ko prisoner ako. Yun ang feeling ng maraming kristyano na kapag ikaw ay naging believer ng Panginoon, you're a slave. Pag hindi ka believer ng Diyos, you're, you have freedom. Kahit ano, gusto, pwede mong gawin. But it's not true. That's not freedom. That's actually slavery. Kasi napapagawa tayo ng kadiliman ng mga bagay na alam nating mali and we didn't have choice. Pero kapag ikaw ay nasa Panginoong Yesus, 
you're free. Why? You're free to say no to Satan and yes to our Lord Jesus Christ. No unang panahon, hindi ko kaya magsabi ng no sa smoking. Hindi ko kaya magsabi ng no sa boys. But because of the Holy Spirit, I can say no to temptation. I can say no to anger. I can say no to unforgiveness. That church is freedom. And the boldness, yung kaya mong tumanggap ng pagkokorekt. Yung sasabihan ka ng anak mo ng mami, huwag kang magagalit ha, kasi ganito. Yung sasabihan ka ng um, best friend mo na ati Mitch, medj, medj, ganto. Aba, kung hindi ka broken, eh, magre-react ka. Pero yung nagpapaturo ka at nagpapatuwid at marunong mag-sorry, that is boldness to accept na tao lang ako, nagkakamali, pero babangon din. At yung courage, yung courage to do what is right, kahit wala kang kasama. Yung courage to give what belongs to the Lord. Yung courage to serve God kasa mga ka-volunteers po natin na nagko-commit pa rin to serve the Lord, mabuhay po kayo. Ang tawag po dyan is boldness. And the reason why you and I can really serve the Lord boldly, na wala tayong kinokondem ng mga tao, ay dahil minsan tayo rin po ay broken pero binless lamang po ng Diyos. And that's the basic reason why we lead faith groups because we want them to experience the very presence of our Lord. Nawa, maalala natin ang proseso ng paggamit ng Diyos. Paulit-ulit yan, walang katapusan. Kaya nga lagi kong prayer, Panginoon, alam mo kung gano'n ako kahina alam mo kung anong aking limitasyon. Lord, huwag mo po kaming ipapahintulot sa tukso. Ihadya mo po kami sa lahat ng gawa ng masama. Kaya po mag-ingat din tayo sa ating sinasabi. Minamaliit natin ang ibang tao, mas magaling tayo. Ba't sila hindi gumagalaw? Ba't ako lang gumagalaw? Huwag po. Let's just charge it to the Lord. Kasi kaya lang naman tayo nakakagalaw at nakakagawa. It's all by the grace of God. Pag-isipan po natin ito. How often do we encounter God? Palagi po sana, every quiet time, every now and then. And are we keeping the balance of being broken, blessed, and bold? O tumigil na lang tayo sa brokenness or tumigil na lang tayo sa boldness na tayo na ang pinakamagaling sa lahat. Let's take time to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Wala kang katulad Walang gaya mo Ikaw lang ang Diyos na sinasampang lupos sa paglipas ng panahon ikaw pa rin hanggang ngayon At magpakailanman, Panginoon Wala kang katulad, walang gaya mo Ikaw lang ang Diyos na sinasampang lupos Oh
I hope that we will always long for that time na tayo ay maka-worship sa ating Panginoong Yesus. And if this is your first time, we are inviting you. Buksan mo lang yung puso mo. Damahin mo lang siya. Ab- umabot ka sa kanya, sabihin mo kung ano ang lahat ng nasa puso mo, ang iyong sitwasyon, at siya'y nangakong he will be near the brokenhearted. Sa pagkakataong ito, ihanda na po natin ang ating mga elements for our communion. Whenever we drink from the cup and eat from the bread, nangako po ang Diyos that we have to do it in remembrance of Him and there will be healing. Hindi ko alam kung anong healing ang kailangan mo ngayon. Maaring ang healing mo ay katulad ng sa akin na slowly but surely or it could be instant. Pero ang pinaka-importante sa lahat, mauna ang ating mga puso. Sabi po ng Panginoong Yesus at the time that He was about to be crucified on the cross, nagkaroon po ng Last Supper, He took the piece of bread and then He broke it. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He became broken. He had a very intimate relationship with the Father kaya hindi sa kanya issue na ibigay ang kanyang buhay sa ikapagpapatawad ng ating mga kasalanan. At dahil He became broken, we have been blessed. Kapag naiisip ko ang cruz, hanggang ngayon, kapag naiisip ko itong broken bread, hanggang ngayon na naaalala ko na dahil sa kanyang kamatayan, ako ay nakaranas ng buhay. At ang inumin ay tanda rin ng kanyang dugo na ibinuhos dun sa cross. And because of the shedding of the blood, the Bible says that there is forgiveness of our sins. At this time, habang hawak natin ng mga bagay nito kasama ang ating mga kapamilya, huwag kang makontento kapatid, kumuha ka and let's do this by faith. Wala naman tong power eh, pero it's actually the heart that God sees that we do it by faith, that we close our eyes and we remember that Jesus died and rose again from the dead to forgive us and save us from our sins. At kung napatawad niya ang ating mga kasalanan, lahat ng ating kailangan, He can provide. Dahil mahal niya tayo, hindi niya tayo iiwan, hindi niya tayo pababaya. Tara, tayo po'y manalangin. Bitbit ang lahat ng ating mga kabigatan. Let's pray before the Lord Jesus. Father, we lift up our bread and we lift up our drink. Cleanse this as well as cleanse our hearts. Maranasan nawa kayo ng bawat isa sa amin as we humble ourselves before you. Kung ano man pong kataasan na nakikita niyo sa aming mga isip at puso. Sa lahat po, youth, children, couples, sa aming lahat, Linisin niyo po ang aming bibig katulad ng kay Isaiah. Ang dumi po namin, dami po namin kakulangan. But we do not stop there. We claim the blessing of your forgiveness and the blessing of your grace. As we lift up our bread and drink from the cup, by faith in the name of Jesus, we destroy all the works of the devil in our lives. Lahat ng galaw niya sa isip namin, wala na. Lahat ng kasinungalingan niya sa aming puso, wala na, wasak na. Ang tanging paniniwalaan lang namin ay ang salita niya at ang kanyang mga pangako. As we lift this up, bless this, and may it bring healing to our minds, souls, bodies, finances, families, everything in Jesus' name. Kainin po natin ang ating mga tinapay. Hallelujah. 
let's drink from the cup. The Bible says whenever we eat and drink, inaalala po natin na matatapos din po ang lahat ng ito na lagi pong mag emerge ang Panginoon at ang kanyang mga anak na victorious. Babalik siya, darating siya. Yun ang pangako niya. Salamat o Diyos sa mga umoo with boldness sa inyong paanyaya for us to be volunteers, for us to be faith group leaders, for us to be pastors leading your ship. If not for you, wala po kami. Kaya, here am I. Send me. Nandito po kami. Gamitin mo po ang aming mga buhay. Bless everyone who are with us and let them receive Jesus in their lives and experience what Isaiah experienced. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Makita-kita po tayo sa prayer meetup on Thursday at mamaya po right after this service. Meron pong nag-iintay dun sa inyo. God bless you. today's lesson? Me too! So without further ado, let's get started. Let us raise our right hand and declare, Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I'll make it a light unto my feet, and a light unto my, my path. And I will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. Have a great day, kids of destiny!
The title of our lesson today is The Love Story of Jacob and Rachel. Ang ating istorya ay matatagpuan sa Genesis chapter 29 verse 15 to 30. Isang buwan nang nananatili si Jacob kay Laban. Kaya naman sinabi ni Laban sa kanya, Hindi porket ka mag-anak kita ay pagtatrabuhin na kita ng walang sahod. Kaya naman, sabihin mo kung ano ang gusto mo. May dalawang babaeng anak si Laban. Si Lea ang panganay at si Rachel naman ang bunso. Gusto ni Jacob si Rachel. Kaya naman ang sabi niya kay Laban, magtatrabaho ako sa iyo for 7 years para kay Rachel. Pumayag si Laban at sinabing mas mabuting mapunta na ang anak ko sa iyo kaysa sa ibang lalaki. At nagtrabaho si Jacob kay Laban for 7 years para makuha si Rachel. Para kay Jacob ay ilang araw lang ito dahil sa pagmamahal niya kay Rachel. Pagkatapos ng 7 years ng pagtatrabaho kay Laban, nakumpleto na ni Jacob ang kasunduan nila kaya naman kinausap niya na si Laban para ibigay sa kanya si Rachel. Ngunit ang ibinigay ni Laban ay si Lea, ang kanyang panganay na anak. Imbis na si Rachel. Kaya naman nagalit si Jacob dahil niloko siya ni Laban. Magpaliwanag si Laban at sinabi na magtrabaho ulit ito ng isa pang pitong taon para kay Rachel at ibibigay niya ito. Pumayik si Jacob dahil sa pagmamahal niya kay Rachel. Kaya naman, nagtrabaho siya ulit ng pitong taon at sa kabuuan nito ay 14 years siyang nagtrabaho para makuha niya si Rachel. Pakaganda at nakaka-inspire yung story natin, di ba kids? So before we proceed to our discussion questions, let us first recite our memory verse for today. Abisa, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Okay, ulitin natin ang ating memory verse. Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. 